Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the live stream of the Jimmy Dore Show. Now, there's been a lot of saber rattling happening over Ukraine and uh, Russia. And I just want to give you a very brief background of what is actually going on there. And then we're going to bring in our expert, Peter Lavelle, and he's going to explain everything to us. Now, I just want to let everybody know, uh, U.S. broke, we broke our promise, or NATO broke our their promise to Russia. So when we let Russia, uh, Ger Germany get back together, one of the promises made was that we wouldn't expand NATO. Well, we've been expanding NATO like freaking crazy, right? So beginning in the mid-90s, Poland, Hungary, the Czech Republic, the Baltic states, and others were granted NATO membership, blatantly violating the non-expansion arrangement. And while Russian leaders objected to these moves, it wasn't until talk turned to bringing Ukraine and Georgia into NATO that Russia began to act in response and to shore up its influence over these strategically critical neighbor states. So again, I just want to impress upon you, imagine if Russia had did this to, in Mexico. And they overthrew a government. They installed a Russian puppet government uh, while arming neo-Nazi paramilitaries who threatened war with the United States. Would the U.S. be moving troops closer to the Mexican border, be considered an act of, act of aggression or a, a provocative act in that case? Because that's exactly what we're doing there. We overthrew Ukraine, and we're now arming neo-Nazis. So here we go. Uh, and let's not forget that in addition to annexing in Crimea, Putin also invaded and overthrew the governments of Iraq and Afghanistan, leading to the deaths of hundreds of thousands of people and is still waging a dirty war in Syria while legal, legally occupying one third of that country. Oh, no, that's not Putin. That's the United States. <laughs> uh. So here, America's uh, Ukraine hypocrisy. What is the hum Ukraine hypocrisy? Well, Ukraine during the Euro Maiden Revolution, Maiden, however you say that, of 2014, the Obama administration and other war hawks in Washington flagrantly interfered in the internal politics of Ukraine, doing whatever they could to help overthrow the elected president, Viktor Yanukovych, and replace him with U.S. puppets. And now, here we are, neo-Nazis in the far right are on the march in Ukraine, and what are we doing? We're helping them. And Biden ways deploying thousands of troops to Eastern Europe and the Baltics. That's, so I just want to show you just the level of hypocrisy that's happening here with the U.S. and their stated goals and what's happening, because this is Antony Blinken, and he's the Secretary of State, and he said, we've made very clear that one country trying to tell another what its choices should be, including with whom it associates, that's not an acceptable proposition. Changing the borders of another country by force, that's not an acceptable proposition, because what that does is it undermines the entire international system, the rules-based order that we have invested in. This is hard to get through without laughing. We've been living, we've been invested in, we've been living by the orders, the rules-based orders that the United States have been invested in and living by, and we think have done much to promote peace and security. And so if those basic principles go challenged, and are allowed to happen with impunity, that's going to undermine the entire system. Now, that's just funny. You know, it's, come on. <laughs> we invade every country we can. We've been doing it like nuts. Look what we're doing with Iran. U.S. seizes Iranian fuel from tankers bound for Venezuela. And here's a, where's the Ukraine? 84% of Americans don't know where Ukraine even is. And so when you don't, when 84% of Americans don't know where a country is, they're more likely to want to invade it. They're more likely to want to send arms there. They're more likely, the less, here it is, the less Americans know about Ukraine's location, the more they want U.S. to intervene. So let me bring in uh, Peter Lavelle. He's the host of RT's International's political debate program, Crosstalk. He's also the co-founder, along with George Samuli. Uh, of the Gaggle podcast, found on YouTube, Rumble, and Locals. Welcome, Peter. Good to see you. Great to be with you. It's 4.30 in the morning, but I'm still here. I really appreciate you getting up early. He's all the way from Moscow, right? That's where you're, you're located? Right. And so now tell me, what did I leave out, and what do you want to share with our people? What's no, I, I, I want to stress what you put in, because what you did almost has never heard of the 
the nature of the regime in Kiev, okay? Uh, how many people are told that the two leading for, um, uh, opposition figures are now being put on trial for treason? How many citizens in the West are told that uh, media outlets are being le- uh, shut down left, right, and center uh, in violation, gross violation of freedom of speech? The U.S. State Department actually encourages this, okay? These are obviously uh, websites and outlets that are in the Russian language. So that's a civil rights uh, violation human rights violation here. Um, um, the European Union just yesterday signed off on a 1.2 billion euro uh, aid deal to Ukraine. So they're encouraging to continue this behavior, okay? Um, lethal aid officially is being sent by the United States. I believe it's been going on for a while. We have trainers there. And so um, so the U.S. and its allies are saying, we need to de-escalate. De-es- Who's escalating this? Russia is escalating in its own country? When does that happen? Okay. I mean, it's very clear. Also, in December, I think it was December 17th, the Russians sent two um, what would essentially be treaties, agreements, one to the Europe, uh, one to NATO, one to the United States, saying, hey, this is our position. This is what we want to do. We would like you to reply. Last week, when, when he, uh, Lavrov meant uh, um, Blinken, they still have no response. They don't want to respond. And one important thing here, this is not about Ukraine. See, this is the, the narrative that's being generated. It's about NATO expansion, okay? Uh, Ukraine is a symptom of the problem. It isn't the problem. And Russia has no interest in occupying Ukraine. However, and I'm speaking for myself and only myself, if weapon systems are put there, on Russia's doorstep, they will take them out. And I'll tell you how it will work. Kennedy told Khrushchev, if you don't get those missiles out of Cuba, we'll get them out there for you, okay? You can talk about sovereignty, you can talk about alliance, you can talk about all you want, but if you don't get them out, we'll take them out. And that's essentially what we have, a Cuban missile crisis in reverse. And so people don't realize that, yes, um, America is the aggressor and that we've been the aggressor for a long time. We've been breaking our promises to not expand NATO. And there almost doesn't seem to be a point for NATO anymore, except to funnel money to weapons manufacturers, right? Well, I mean, what is NATO? NATO is a propaganda grift, okay? It's not a military. What I mean, what can it do? I mean, you want to rely, rely on the German military? What's that? Okay, and maybe that's a good thing, given history, all right? Yes. It is, okay, the UK has some assets, and the, the in 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 your it's Turkey, and nobody trusts Turkey. So you know what you know Stoltenberg does. It's just a propaganda thing. It's one propaganda event after another, and it's a fig leaf, a cover for the U.S. That's all it is. But what is remarkable here is that many of the Europeans, particularly Germans, are saying we're not a hundred percent on board here, and they're really irritating the Americans. They read this new government in Germany not very unified here, but they realize they're the ones that are going to pay the cost the most outside of uh, um, death and destruction in Ukraine, which, by the way, NATO, particularly the United States, will not defend if there is a war with Russia. I mean, uh, I keep telling everybody, the, you, you, the regime in Kiev, the more you rely upon your NATO friends, the smaller your country gets. You lost the Donbass. You lost Crimea. What are you going to lose now because of your friendship? It's going to be a rump state. And what would stop the Russians? All these penalties? Russia's been sanctioned since 2014 over this. They're bulletproof. Go ahead. Do your sanction deal. Oh, by the way, if you throw Russia out of the Swiss system, system, how is Russia going to sell its energy to Germany? I mean, is Russia just going to give it away? Okay, they, they, nobody's thinking this out. You know, these low octane thinkers like Blinken, you know, you want to hurt Russia, you're going to hurt your allies. And I thought Trump was disrespectful to allies. So, so what you're telling, so what, so why is, what's the real reason that the United States is doing this? Because you just said, correct me if I'm wrong, if I heard you incorrectly, that if Russia, let's say that Ukraine it becomes a NATO state and Russia attacks Ukraine. You said that the United States will not defend Ukraine. Is that what you're saying? Well, they're, 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 well, at this point in time, I mean, what we had the the, the great minds that met at uh, Camp David uh, with Blinken saying, you know, well, we're going to deploy five thousand more troops to Europe. So where are they going to go? Poland, um, the Baltic states. 
They're not going to they say they're not going to go to Ukraine. They may um, end up there. We've seen this before. Ginning up a war that no one, everyone will lose. Everyone. Will. Well, I mean, what is what do the Americans want? The Victorian Newlands and these types here. They want to knock Russia out of Europe permanently. That's what they want to do. So they'll have con- complete hegemony in Europe. But it's a, it's a pyrrhic victory. What is the prize of Europe? Europe will be isolated. It will be this little part of the Eurasia landmass uh, uh, in the West. Okay, and then of course everyone's here. Russia will embrace China. Well, that's a strategic alliance that's already real. Okay, so I mean, you know, we'll punish the Russians by taking out Nord Stream two. There are even people saying we we'll should destroy it. Well, everybody, the Nord Stream two. Let what, me explain it. To what you. is? Yeah, it's what, the Ger- This is a pipeline from ga- it's, from Russia. It's to a ga- Germany, the okay. gas pipeline, and this is what we're gas talking pipeline. about. Okay. Yeah. Why did they build it? The Germans asked the Russians, hey, can we build a second one? We'll build a second. We need a second one. The Russians said, well, you know, the first one was kind of complicated because we had to go through the European. No, no, this is private. This is Germany, Russia, Germany, Russia. Well, okay, they built it. And now, well, we're not really sure because of the pressure from the United States, obviously. They need that energy. I mean, you know, you, you, all these uh, lunatics like Sean Hannity, you know, we're, you know we're, we can break the back of Russia through Nord Stream 2. It's a joke, okay? The, the natural gas will go somewhere else. And you know what, Jimmy? There are plenty of buyers, okay? Yeah. And think about this, everybody. Russia is an energy powerhouse, at least that, okay? And, there's, um, and you know, it can sell uh, uh, elsewhere, but when all this blows over, if it does, you know, in a generation, uh, c- can we buy some of your energy? Well, the last time we signed a deal with you people, you break all of your agreements. You break your word over and over and over. NATO will not expand one inch. Okay. And and talk about invading. Look at Kosovo. Okay. You broke the, you, you broke United Nations Security Council resolutions recognizing that illegally. And, and Lavrov said, he was foreign minister, he said, you will regret doing that. Hello, Crimea. So the real, so I, I'm trying to remember what I, I, little I know about Ukraine. Now, I know that Trump was impeached for pausing a shipment of arms to these neo-Nazis who are running Ukraine right now. And the reason why that they're running it was because there was, you know, they overthrew the government of Viktor Yanukovych. Now he was he was he was he wanted to sign an economic agreement with Russia instead okay, of the there, we okay last time we talked okay let, yeah. let's get this straight okay first of all Yanukovych the pro Russia um, uh, president of Ukraine that's not true if he was pro Russia why was he in negotiations with the Europeans for an association agreement what he was trying to do he was try, trying to split the difference he went wanted Russian help and he wanted uh, EU help and of course Victoria Newland and Jeffrey Piat and all the rest said no 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 you can't do that you have to it's a civilizational choice that was what they said okay and so you know Kovic you know I, I always tell my, my viewers on Crosstalk you know you know Kovic is given this massive this massive agreement and he goes through it and he's going page after where's the money? There's no money here for us, except for in an annex, we had basically become a surrogate for NATO. So no, no, I'm not signing up for that. Like, this is a back door to NATO membership. And that wasn't popular. Can I, let me tell you something that really irritates me, Jimmy. Blinken, that buffoon in Geneva said, well, according to public opinion polls in Ukraine, NATO is actually popular. According to public opinion polls, actually, Russia is not so popular with Ukraine. Yes, because you're not counting the Donbass and Crimea. Since 2014, I mean, this is so sophomoric, okay? He takes this, this he delineates 2014, the illegal coup, when uh, millions of people, quote unquote, left Ukraine, the Donbass, and Crimea said, whoa, finally, our chance to get out of this mess. They had been uh, a referenda there before. It was never recognized by the Ukrainian government or the international community. But the, the fact that uh, Crimea wanted to get loose, it wasn't an original idea in 2014. It was all, all the way to the beginning of Ukraine's independence in 1991. And they say, we never belonged in Ukraine in the first place. That was a whim of Khrushchev, okay? And the great cartographer Stalin that made our border. You know, Stalin made U- Ukraine's borders, okay? It was, and, and so, this is a very complicated, diverse country here. And what the United States is, as it does, it pu- pushes an ethno-nationalist agenda. You keep mentioning these neo-Nazis. That is very true. But what did they do in the former Yugoslavia? Croats, neo-Nazis there, okay? Look what they did in Syria. Go for the jihadis. You know, you always go for the extremists. And it's across the board. 
You know, this is what they they even did in Libya, okay? Encourage the worst of society, and usually outside elements at that. So people think in the United States that the United States government, of course, will back the people who are the best for the people in the country. And and what they don't know is it's the exact opposite. We, what you just pointed out is that we, a week uh, aligned with the jihadis. We aligned with Al Nusra, Al Qaeda in Syria, in Libya. Uh, we're doing that. And now we're, we're in bed with these, well, you call them ethnocentric, other people call them neo-Nazis in, uh, in, the U- in Ukraine. And so it all comes down to economics, right? So this, th- let me just, so people, just so people understand what we're, there really is happening is that we kind of touched on it, that uh, the European Union, which is aligned with the United States, wanted Ukraine to kind of sign up for our uh, what, what, how would you put it the, the go along with their economic program as opposed to Russia's? How, what, do, what do you call that? Well, okay, I mean, what you have to understand here, there's a sequence here. You have to get in. Um, they want you to get into NATO first. Then once you're in NATO, they pull you into the European Union. OK. And what, 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 with the association agreement, you know, why did Russia object? They objected three times very publicly. And each time said, look, you know, you're making a, an either or choice here now. Ukraine's most important market is Russia. We're, we're the most important market, okay? So why don't we come up with a deal with Russia, Ukraine, and the European Union? Because they wanted us, they wanted the Ukrainians to sign a customs agreement where they, and, and, and Ukraine at the time was in a customs union with Russia. So when they, if they signed the agreement without Russia being consulted, it would be a complete open market into Russia. There'd be, there'd be nothing to stop it. And the Russians say, no, 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 we, we have to control our market. And so it was a conduit, okay? And also, hundreds Hunter Biden knows a whole lot about this asset stripping of Ukraine, okay? Burisma, one of the most corrupt energy companies in the world, even before Hunter Biden showed up. Everybody in the European Union, Burisma is dirty, okay? The U.S. State Department knew it was dirty, okay? And, and, and so, you know, asset stripping, you know, so buying of land. Oh, my goodness. You know, the, the, just taking anything of value. And oh, by the way, with the association agreement, what does Ukraine get to export to the European Union? Basically nothing. So they signed so Ukraine signed the association agreement with NATO after the coup, after the coup. Yes. So, so they have to overthrow the government to get this done. The. The United States are in bed with the people who committed the coup. They signed this association agreement with NATO and the European Union. Right. That's what happened. And then. And so now what makes Russia want to build up troops on the border? What what are we doing? Well, year after year, more. I mean, you know, one of the things that they never talk about, because obviously it's top secret, but the NSA is putting vast assets into eastern Ukraine, obviously, to to beef up uh, an impending military buildup to bring Ukraine in. And so, you know, the the thing that that, uh, Americans, and I think even, you know, the, the deep state, as they call it, I mean, Russia sees and hears everything that's going on in Ukraine, everything. And and that, it's no coincidence this is happening right now, is that the Russians are saying we we have nowhere to go we got our 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 back up against the wall you guys have been expanding for 30 years you they you just say we need to talk we have to have meetings and this stuff russians said no we've been talking for 30 years and we've been watching this now if you put an offensive missile system and if you're on the receiving end of violence i don't care if you call it defensive or offensive it's it, it's existential and this is what the russians are saying i mean you come right up to the wall and you know what we can say no because we we um we have no no one will determine what our national security interests are. Russia does. See, this is what NATO does. You know, if you go back to the Helsinki final act in the, in the 1970s, uh, um, security is indivisible. You cannot incur- increase your security at the expense of another country. NATO agreed to that. The Western world agreed to that. Not anymore. And the Russians are saying, no, we have to have our security too. NATO meaning Washington does not recognize that Russia has any legitimate security interest at all. So, again, this is all coming down to an expansion of NATO, and it's all about ec- economics. And NATO and the United States are the aggressor. And, you know, I don't even know how, how is it being reported in the United States? This is one of those stories. I'm not even really watching the mainstream news media because you know it's all going to be garbage. Uh, and. Have you seen any coverage from the United States on how they're handling this, Peter? 
Well, I, I have to say, um, um, I thought Tucker Carlson is one of the most courageous people in ma mainstream media. He's really stood up to this. The rest of it is garbage. I mean, and it's really infuriating because it, they don't even get facts correct. OK, and it's it's always boils down to, you know, Russia's paranoid, Putin's paranoid. Yeah. No, this is very rational. What, what, what it befuddles me is that the Russians, particularly in the last few months, have been telegraphing. I mean, if you look uh, at every single level, if you look at their news agencies, they made it very clear. We have presented these documents. We needed to nego negotiate and talk about this because it's very important to us. We have red lines, too. And w one of the things that really worries me being on this side over here is that the Russians are very serious about this. The Blinkens of this world are not. They think that they can bluff their way through. No, we've come to the Rubicon. And if, if, if uh, Russia deems that it's necessary to protect its sovereignty, it will do it, Jimmy. It will. So America just sent, I think, two hundred million dollars worth of arms. Correct. And that is that. And that's, just, and that's just in the last few days. Yeah. And so we're being very, you know, saber rattling with Russia. And this could get serious or it is already serious. It could get deadly. And uh, so what how do you see this playing out? Well, you know, Douglas McGregor, he's a very interesting character. Um, he was an advisor in the waning days of the Trump administration. He's actually a, a realist foreign policy guy, and I really like him and trust him. He was on with a, your friend uh, Aaron Maté over the last week or so. And he tends to think that there could be a, a limited occupation. I tend to think not. I think that, when, you know, going back to the, the Cuban Missile Crisis, m my sense is this, is that you know, the Russians are going to say, if you, you put these missile systems here, here, and here, we're just going to take them out. We'll give you an hour notice to save you guys, and then we're just going to do it, and we'll just keep doing it, okay? Because we have nothing to lose now. What are you going to do? Go nuclear on us? Right. You want to escalate? You want to escalate? Because this is what they've done. They've made it to, you know, zero to, uh, uh, it, it's a zero something. It's a binary. Either we have the status quo or nuclear war. That's a, that's a craven choice by Washington. Okay, so you think that Putin will take out these weapon systems? And oh, that I, in my personal, I do not speak for the Russian government. In my personal opinion, I think I think that they're tearing a page from Kennedy, saying if you don't take them out, we will. And do you think that NATO's hands will be tied for with a response? I think NATO is going to. It's in its its waning days. I think it's a, it's coming to an end because look. If, if everyone's going to see, you know, NATO is all this big talk, you know, all hat, no cow. And then things happen. And what does NATO do? Sits on its thumbs. It doesn't have any assets, Jimmy. The greatest military alliance. And I mean, all this propaganda, it is really a, 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 a an empty um, tusk. It's, it's what it is. It's a propaganda machine is what it is. I mean, what, what military assets do the Baltic republics have? Oh, and Jimmy... If Russia is such a big threat, why don't they spend more money on defense? One has to wonder. You mean, why doesn't Russia spend more money on defense? No, why doesn't NATO countries spend more money on, on their defense if Russia is such a threat to them? Oh, I got The you. Baltic republics don't even spend 2% of GDP on defense, but they're on the doorstep of Russia. Why don't they spend more if they're afraid? Well, yeah, well, they also know that the United States is way overspending on, on defense and uh, the, I, I don't. Yeah, they really don't fear them, I'm going to guess. And uh, they know that the United States has more missiles and stuff than they'll know what to do with. And uh, yeah, but Jimmy, they're the cannon fodder. That's see that, that that's what makes this so absurd. OK. Oh, the Americans will protect us. Well, when you're in ashes. Right. I mean, you know. You know, I mean, the, the, see, this is the thing that NATO's nightmare is that in a scenario in which uh, a NATO country or an associate country like Ukraine um, uh, and they can't react. And then then the whole house of cards collapse because everybody will say, well, it's just really a sham. And, and plus, you know, you, you have you have you have um, uh, populations all across Europe that say they don't even want to go to war over the Baltic republics. And they are members of NATO. NATO really does wake up in the middle of the night sweating because it's really a, a, a facade. OK, it's not it's all a propaganda effort to convince people to spend money and to remain uh, a supplicant of the United States. So you don't have to do anything. But Europe is isolating itself. And you, so you think this is part of a trend that's going to be bad for Europe? 
Oh, I think ultimately Europe is the biggest loser in all of this. Okay, look, the 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 the, 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 mo- the biggest uh, luxury market in Europe is Russia. The biggest consumer market is Russia for Europe. The Europeans will pay ve- a very heavy price. Oh, and you know you have you have the Americans cobbling energy resources, getting Qatar in and all that. I mean, that's a stopgap thing. That's something for a couple of weeks or maybe a month, not thirty years. Okay. And who pays the cost? It's the Europeans. That's what they do. And of course, with the, the with the Afghan grift over, they got to find a new one, Jimmy. Got to replace it. That's right. Uh, no doubt about it. Well, people didn't realize that when they, so Joe Biden pulled out of Afghanistan and he wanted credit for ending that war. And what I told people is, well, watch where they put the money that they were putting into Afghanistan. Are they going to take it back here and put it in our in our country? No. In fact, they ramped up the military budget as they ended the war. They added another like thirty billion dollars that they even asked for onto their bet. Again, that's enough money to end homelessness in the United States. They don't care. They don't want to do it. And it, it, yes, yeah, so we end. So when they ended the Afghanistan war, I'm like, well, where are they going to put that money? And so now they're putting it into Ukraine. We're ramping up tensions with China. And so they're not ending the warmongering that, that the, they might have ended the Afghan war, but they're not ending our fucking oh. imperialistic flex. Go ahead. With, with the, I think their theory of the case is this, is that they somehow, in some, some kind of fever dream, we can knock the Russians out and then we can refocus our attention on China. That's ridiculous, okay? That's absolutely ridiculous. Um, uh, and, and plus, you know, the Russians have, have prepared for all of this, methodically prepared. They're not afraid of any sanctions or anything. Sure, if massive sanctions were, were, were imposed, it would, there would be difficulty, but it, it won't be the end of Russia. I mean, I, it, I, I don't know. These people, they know, almost none of them know anything about Russia at all, you know. And it's all focused on Vladimir Putin, which I, when Putin leaves, there'll be another person. And you know what he'll be like? Putin. That's right. All right. Well, Peter Lavelle, is there anything I left out you want to say or add? All I want to say is thank God for Jimmy Dore. Okay. And thank God for the hard work that you do. And thank God that people like Jimmy Dore can reach across the aisle and talk to people like Tucker Carlson, because I think that is really what we need to do. They want us to hate each other. We have to hate each other. No, we don't. Okay. We should hate them. Okay. For what they do to us and what they do in our name. OK, and and the, and and the topic that we've been talking about, everybody loses everyone except for people that make money off of arms. That's all. They go from one grift to the next and everyone loses. And the country that they claim to care so much about, Ukraine, will lose the most. And they've already you know, 14,000 Ukrainians in the Donbass have been killed all, uh, over the last eight years. Who killed them? The Kiev government. And it's supported by the West and NATO. The Russians didn't kill those people. All right, Peter Peter Lavelle, I really appreciate you taking time out and uh, explaining stuff to our audience and uh, also to me. And good luck on your show uh, on Crosstalk and also the Gaggle podcast, which you can find on YouTube, Rumble, and Locals. Thanks so much for getting up. It's always great to see you. My pleasure. Hope to see you soon. Okay, bye-bye. We added a second show, January 26th in Raleigh, and we're going to be in Philadelphia on February 20th. Go to jimmydorecomedy.com for a link for all our tickets. And while you're there, become a premium member. Get access to all our premium videos.